I glanced over at the lunar clock. It didn't really matter, it wasn't a clock in the usual sense of the word. After all, time was meaningless. Well, sort of, as I was trying to go to sleep on the moon. Only 19 minutes ago, my heart was beating at 170 beats per minute. As we tried to set up this nitrogen carbon lunar triple flux experiment. We're living on one of the most hostile places near good old Mother Earth. Outside of the spacecraft there is a hard vacuum. I guess I would only last a few seconds if I were to take my spacesuit off. Gut-wrenching stuff literally. My lungs would explode and my saliva and teardrops would boil. Despite the inherent dangers in space travel though, this is a truly amazing experience. I have logged up 2 hours 43 minutes walking on the moon. And you know it is strange, you sort of get the experience that... I know it sounds crazy, but that you've been here before. Maybe more of a grain of truth in this. Could be a primeval feeling in our genes. What I mean is it's not just human experience that transcends space and time. No sir, the very atoms and elements that we are made of have probably stamped their presence on our very soul since the beginning of time. The stillness and calm. To say it's an overwhelming experience I think is a bit of an understatement. The blackness is total. It must be like being in a coal mine. Mind you, we go through the gates of hell doing our workouts prior to being an astronaut. I can understand why. They have to get you contorted to what Mother Nature could possibly ever throw at you. Hard vacuums, oven hot temperatures, and also temperatures not far from absolute zero and shadow when you go behind the moon. When you think about it, it's remarkable how they design the spacesuits to cope with these massive swings in temperature. Despite all this, I wouldn't spot what I'm doing now for anything. This has to be the greatest and most exciting time of my life. Also the most nervous and fearsome time. But, you know, you kind of get used to the fear. Anyway, just a few routine procedures to do now before sleeping. These damn procedures, mind you, they are essential to an astronaut's survival. You've got to have a plan. Myself and my colleague are totally dependent on the mission centre back on Earth. You know, it's sort of strange here. Not spooky in the sense that a little green one-eyed monster is going to get you. But it's like something is watching over you. I can feel the echoes of distant mountains and the comforting stillness ambling through my body. I am semi-conscious now, not really asleep, like as though I have one eye open, not because of impending danger, but I feel at one with the cosmos. It's like a sixth sense, one that is gently soothing my emotions. Bit more sleepy now, but even though I am not looking out through the landing vehicle, I can still feel the impression of the lunar surface. In fact, my mind is still exploring it, but in a gentle and warm way. I am asleep and yet awake. You hear the occasional beeps. However, you know everything is okay, but at least for the moment. Your mind kind of plays funny tricks, but overall, it is a pleasant experience sleeping, or rather partly sleeping on the moon. Very brief dream then of prodding through a muddy field. Then a bird hovering and a spring flower, over in an instant. A few seconds can seem like hours or whatever you want it to feel like. I get a timed alarm from mission control at 0600 hours Greenwich Mean Time and I hear the gentle music of the birds singing in the morning. This is the traditional way the astronauts are woken up from space sleep. It's kind of nice, but I'm getting used to the quiet tranquility and teasing calmness of being on the moon. Guess I had better make the most of it because in three days time I'll be walking on and breathing the air of planet Earth. Oh, what a lovely sight planet Earth is as I glance at her from my space couch on the moon. I see the whole of mankind and sense the whole of the universe and infinity as well.